I was in search of a little electronic store and I had to go to Megapolis and I just was getting lost in these mazes of malls. This mall is kind of like a ghost town. So many things are closed. Megapolis. The little electronic store was closed. I'm sweating like crazy. There's no circulation in here. So I might be ordering something on Amazon. So this was a different mall, clearly more lively, lots of stores. And I don't really shop at stores like this, but it's nice to know that they're there. And if you're considering Panama and you do like to shop, this is all in Panama City. This was a really cool spot right in front of the hotel and actually in the Patia area to Casco Viejo is this area called the Cinta Costepa. And it is walking paths, biking, people are rollerblading, there's weightlifting stations, and it's just a really cool spot where pedestrians are gathered and doing exercise and dancing and also just really a safe place to walk and to get into Casco Viejo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen him on Facebook. You might have seen him in the restaurant. Are you ready to meet Mike Nikolic, the man behind Michael's Restaurant, Panama City. So I am here at the famous Michael's Restaurant with Mike Nikolic. Me. Yay! <laughs> and uh, you know, of course, I've seen you on your Facebook group. Uh -huh. And one thing I have to tell you, I was super impressed that you managed to open a restaurant during a pandemic. Yeah. How yeah. the heck did that happen? Well, that's a, that, your first question is an excellent question. It wasn't easy, I can tell you that. And uh, it's been a challenge to do it, and it was a decision. But uh, when I, you know, I was stuck in the, not stuck in the United States, but I couldn't get back to Panama. I had, actually had two goals when I get back. I couldn't wait to get back because I always felt so much better living here. But, one of the things was uh, was to have a restaurant, and one of the other things was to find a special woman. So I found the restaurant, and I was still looking for the other one. But the difference, you know, when I came back here, there was so many restaurants that were closed. So many lo locations available and areas and zones in, in the city that were completely shut down and still are. Right. I'll give you a perfect example of the Hard Rock Hotel. I used to go there all the time. Athanasio was right there. That whole area right now, you know, was like a uh, was like a war zone. So I think the biggest thing was looking for somewhere for location. There, there was good 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 things and bad things taking this time to do it. Everybody else was closing their restaurants, and I'm right. thinking about opening. Right. But obviously, the deals and the rents were so much so much less that maybe it's an offset. Yeah. But. You know, I learned a lot of lessons because I had a restaurant in uh, Boquete when I bought that. It was turnkey. So I just walked in. I'd never been in the restaurant business. Walked in. The gentleman before had done such a great job. But I just had to wow. learn a little bit of this and tell some jokes and fix some financial things. And boom. This was a whole new experience. And I learned a lot. A lot of things. Not all of them are good. And I don't want to be negative. But uh, to open a business here, there's not only just red tape, but there's some... There's, you is, find out a little bit of the corruption that you have to pay. Is there some bribery and corruption oh, that happened? Oh, absolutely. man. That's and so I, disheartening. It, and I kind of felt I was at a disadvantage because if I knew a little bit more about the tricks and the games that you right. can get away with. But I learned slowly. Yeah. Learned slowly. Yeah. So it was expensive lessons, but hey, 
we're there. We're there. Excellent. So, you know, one of the other things, like I know like the restaurant business is notoriously difficult, but you also have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which yes. is also another yes. challenge. I mean, to offer, you know, those three meals. Yes, we do. We do. And now what happened when we opened, we were doing breakfast every day of the week. And then, you know, these things are learned when you open a new business. Well, guess what? The people were not back to work. And the hotels are, I mean, we're right across from the Soros Hotel. There's a huge office building, it's huge, whatever, 50 floors, it's 15% occupied. Right. So, you know, that decision there to do breakfast every day, uh, but what happened was our weekend breakfast turned out to be very popular. So our brunches on Saturday and Sunday, and I made that decision just to, we'll, we'll keep that going Saturday and Sunday, and uh, we, we don't do the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday breakfasts no more. Strictly for the reason the government has been changing hours, switching this, doing that, and it, it's been confusing, so. Uh, but that's when you open a new business, you have to learn what your demographics and your clients are, so. Yeah. But we still serve breakfast every day, any time of night, whether it's uh, 12 when we open, or we come in at 9.30 at night and want an omelet, well, no problem. I was very excited to hear about that, because, you know, breakfast gets, just shut down into this before noon category, but yeah. breakfast at any time of day or night is a great thing. Well, I, I will tell you, you know, I didn't want to just serve regular, just in your typical come to Panama and get breakfast, here's your, here's your two eggs, you know, toast. Our breakfasts are a little bit different and unique, and actually where I got the idea from, my daughter works at a very popular restaurant in Philadelphia, so I've eaten there so often, I said, well, this would just be a gangbuster. So we do you know, fancy pancakes and fancy French toast and different items that uh, you won't find in uh, And holiday maybe. sauce, is it actually made? Yeah, we make house? everything. We make our own bread, we make our own pasta, it's all handmade Amazing. here. Uh, everything is, uh, we don't buy any, nothing's frozen at all. Ice. Yes. Ice is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream too. Other than that, that's it. <laughs> Was there a, um, degree of training for the chefs that you have um, because you know or were they skilled in making these things from scratch no actually I got very lucky to find a young young man who worked at the top restaurant at least it's ranked as the top restaurant he'd been there for four years and uh, just happened to know him because I used to eat at this restaurant all the time so we had become friends and got him but he had never really but if you're a chef, I mean, if you put an egg in this flour, you're making pasta, you're making a pancake, yeah. they know what to do. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like it, to be honest with you, I like him because he wasn't a chef so much before. Yes. He was. He did all the work, and somebody else told him what to do. But I have somebody that works, and I don't have to deal with the chef mentality. The ego. The ego. The arrogance. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah. I, I can't be surrounded by that. Yeah. No. I uh, kind of person that I feel if I ask somebody to do something, I should, I should be able to be able to do that as well. So yeah. I don't ever ask anybody to do something I wouldn't do. Um, another thing I uh, was, you know, very um, interested in hearing about was, uh, well, two things actually. One, you kept people employed during the pandemic, even when the business wasn't here. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Very a difficult thing to do. <laughs> And I really thought, you know, we did a lot of things when I opened different. To be honest with you, I think you know because you're part of the member of the Facebook group. I tried to, I've analyzed or documented it, this opening of this, and some things we've tried to do to help, to help people in the city. And right. one of the goals I thought I could do is bring, is give employment back to the people. You know, for the people that don't know, while they were locked down for six, seven months, yeah, you could only leave your your house for two hours a day, twice a week. And they were only receiving $100 and started out as $80 a month and $100 a month. Yeah. And I don't care if you had a family of two or four. That's what you got. You needed to survive. So, obviously, finding people was not a difficult uh, thing to do. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, especially when you open a restaurant. You just, there's so many surprises you don't want. Is anybody even going to come here? Right. You know, and you're paying the people. and appreciative but like every business sometimes the most difficult things 
is employing people. Yeah. Well, this is my first time out in a year and a half. I don't know. How am I doing? No, oh, no. <laughs> Seems like you've it, done this before. It does take a while to reemerge into society after, you know, we've been so shut down. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, um, it does. Yeah, and, and, you know, you see that, and I think we all try to figure out some people, and I have no problem with it, but, you know, I remember going back when we didn't know how to high five or yeah. do the. Now some people want to shake your hand or their arrow. Yeah. So you're. E, 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 what are we doing here? What are we? What, next thing you know, we're all dead. The macarena, <laughs> yeah. The, um, the pandemic. That's a new. That's yeah. a new dance. Tell me some of the um, favorite dishes that you okay. uh, really like. That you, even though it's your place, uh -huh. you know that you would still eat. Like, okay. You know, well, I, can, I will tell you this, most of the menu is based off dishes that I've been, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to eat so many restaurants and the best restaurants around, around the, uh, in the world, I can say that. Uh, and most of the plates I've taken are copied, but uh, not copied, but are, and redesigned my way that I like from yeah. different restaurants around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember working at a very popular, famous restaurant called Commander's Palace in New, in New Orleans. And they had a soup called Soup 123, and you got three little different of their favorite soups. So I thought of that, I'm going, well, tartar, we can do, so we have a tartar 123, and one is salmon, one is uh, shrimp, and the other is tuna. And just different things from my favorite, different different dishes that I enjoyed, and that's what I wanted, wanted to do. The music, I want to listen to my favorite music, so it's music from the 70s and 80s and uh, stuff love, like that. I feel like I'm walking into my past. That's right. You know? I was going to put a disco ball up here, but haven't done that yet. <laughs> and uh, and when, when are the servers going to coordinate with their dance moves? Oh, God. <laughs> no. Who knows? Maybe now. We might do that here. <laughs> we might do that here. Um, all right. I, I like to ask uh, one follow-up question that has nothing to do with restaurants okay. or anything. Do you think that people should follow their head or their heart in life? In life? Well, I think you got to follow your, you know, your heart. I really do. I am always done everything that I've wanted to do. I've said I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it's always based off, I would feel terrible. I always said, I don't want to ever look back and go, I wonder what it would have happened if, if. I don't ever, at least I know what would happen yeah. if. It's the best answer I can give to that question. But if you think it's something you want to do, you just do it. What do you got to lose? I don't know what you got to lose. Uh, exactly. You know, the only thing that lose numbers change Maybe they'll change in the bank a number in a bank that you don't know about, but it's just a silly number that might change a little bit. That doesn't right. mean anything. So, there you go. I hope that answers the question. Of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank All right. you so much for your time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Enjoy. I'm sure you'll be seeing so many people. I know based I'm going to get at least 657 video. here because yeah. I mean, we, we got to get them followers up to 1,000 after, <laughs> after this video. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, because it's in the swimming building, you can go for a swim and then have a nice lunch. <laughs> for all of the subscribers or viewers that are watching this, uh, this video on YouTube, I'm gonna give you a special offer. If you come into Michael's and you tell them that, hey, I saw you on uh, Patty, uh, Blue Haze's video blog, and you say the secret password, the secret phrase is, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. You're going to get 20% off your bill, okay? Yeah.